Welcome to the teardown of the Roborock S6 and T6. Um, this is the first step in order to get root access to your device. This is unfortunately necessary as the old routing methods for generation 1 and S5 do not work anymore for T6 or S6. So before we start, a quick disclaimer. Um, I take absolutely no responsibilities and if you disassemble your device, it's at your own risk and you likely avoid the warranty. Before you start, I would recommend that you watch the whole video and think about if you really need root access to your vacuum cleaner. So, there's two ways to disassemble the device. You can start from the bottom or you can not from the top. I personally prefer the top um, because it makes some things a little bit easier. So, just take a piece of paper and uh, with that you can avoid some scratches and use some tool like a knife or something and um, remove the cover. It sounds horrible, but it's it's fine. So my vacuum cleaner is already modified, so just ignore the weird virus at the USB port. To remove the ever cover, we need to remove uh, six screws. In case if we mix up the screws later, I just make some pictures for you and um, I show you every time what the screws look like. Some of the screws are protected with white rubber covers. Uh, in my case, they're kind of loose already, but uh, you might um, need to put a little bit more force to remove them. Under the lid we find a lighter, uh, which we need to remove in order to disassemble the vacuum further. And now is also a good moment to remove the dustbin. So, at this point we finish with the top side, so we continue with the bottom side. First we remove the main brush. And afterwards we remove the side brush. And now we continue with the bottom screws. Technically we just remove all the screws which we can see. So while we are uh, busy with the screws, you might have been wondering why we don't use the USB um, connection on the other side to um, get root access. 
Unfortunately, the USB connection is, is protected, so um, you need some kind of special authentication um, to connect um, over it, and we don't have this credential, so we cannot use that. After we remove the cover, you can see that there is the battery. So in case your battery breaks over time, you know now how to replace it. Um, next, we need to remove the front bumper. Um, now we remove the battery. Um, if you remove the battery, you need to be a little bit careful um, with the connector, so just don't pull it and like break something off. And now we remove the brush assembly. As a quick side note, you don't have to remove the tires, they can stay where they are. Um, it's not a problem for the further disassembly. And the, the good thing is you can't lose parts. So the next thing we remove is the side brush motor, which is uh, held in place by three screws. You see a fourth screw, but there's a slack from the um, tire, and you don't need to remove it.
So finally we can see the PCB. So there's one important thing you want to take care of. The T6 or S6, they have an additional um, air filter which makes the vacuum quieter in comparison to the S5, for example. Um, and if you reassemble this whole device, you want to make sure that you don't forget to put in this filter. I just mentioned that because it happened twice to me. Unfortunately, the UART pins are on the underside of the uh, PCB, so we need basically to somehow get the PCB out and need to remove all the connectors. You probably want to make pictures beforehand um, to make sure that you know how to reassemble everything. As I prepared my vacuum for the video, I kind of make already all the connectors loose. In your case, it might be a little bit more difficult to remove the connectors. Um, just make sure that you don't damage the connectors or the cables by pulling on them. After you remove the screws, you can um, remove the small PCB with the buttons. It might be a little bit difficult to remove it, but um, you can just pull it off. These are the last four screws which we need to remove in order to remove the PCB. All right, now we have the PCB. Um, on the PCB, what you can find here is the quad-core uh, all-winner CPU. Um, next to that is the EMMC flash and the DDR3 RAM. There's also like an STM32, which is responsible for the sensors uh, and the Wi-Fi module. So this board is already modified. So um, I connected uh, the UART pins so I can access them from outside. Um, what I did is I just soldered copper wire to it and used um, tape as a strain relief. Um, here you see the uh, pinout of the test pads. Um, if you solder to that, you need to be really, really careful and you need a strain relief. Otherwise, you can just pull the pads and this would be really, really bad. All right, that was part number one. Um, now we are ready for the actual routing process in part number two. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like, you can um, follow me on Twitter or visit also my homepage and then see you in part two.